So throughout this Intro to Seaborn series, I've used a lot of color palettes, and that's because there's just so many different options. Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel where we talk about data visualizations in Python. In today's video, we're going to explore various different options for the Seaborn color palettes. I'm going to also show you how you can create your own custom color palette. So let's get started in the Python code. So like usual, we'll go ahead and get started by importing Seaborn and saving that as SNS. I'm also going to load in some data from the Seaborn library called tips. So taking a look at the top part of that data frame, you see that we have various different bill amounts and also the tip amounts left by each customer. We also have various different characteristics like the day of the week or when that meal was served. So let's get started exploring color palettes. I'm going to start off by setting my style to be white grid. And now let's take a look at the scatter plot. So I've plotted on the x-axis the total bill amount, and y represents the tip amount. And I also have all of these data coming from that tips data frame. One thing I can do is also pass in another column, a categorical column like day, to the hue property. This will split out so that I have a different color for every single day of the week. And you'll notice that Seaborn is using its default color palette here. If you ever want to check out Seaborn's default color palette, you can check that out by typing in sns.color underscore palette. This will show you the default color palette that Seaborn currently uses. So I have four different days here, so it's taking the first four colors in this color palette. But there's lots and lots of other color palette options in Seaborn. For example, we can still reference color palette, but if we pass in a valid string name, such as terrain, now you'll see that there are other color palettes that you can use in your figures. To use any of these named color palettes, all we have to do is add this palette argument and set that equal to a valid palette name. So for example, terrain. And now we see these colors represented on our figure. There are currently 170 different named color palettes that you can use within Seaborn. So you can definitely go look those up anytime you want to use a different palette. For example, there's a great blog post here that I'll link in the comment section below that shows you all 170. But if you forget their names, you don't have to go look them up. You can actually just pass in an invalid palette name. For example, K is not a valid palette name. If I pass that in, I'll get an error message, but if I scroll down, I'll see all of those names of those 170 different palettes. So this is exactly how I remember which palettes are valid. I actually just type in something wrong, take a look at the error message, and then I'll just pick out whichever palette name that I want to use. Looking through these palette names, you'll notice that a lot of these end in underscore R. So all of the palettes that end in underscore R are actually the same palette but reversed. So here's terrain, but if we add underscore R, we'll just see that same palette in reverse order. I have one more trick for you for these basic color palettes. So let's say that I'm creating a scatter plot like this one, and I see Seaborn's default blue here. Well, if I want to update the color of these dots, I would reference that as color. So it's not a palette, it's a color because we just have one color throughout the entire figure. But watch what happens if I switch this color to the string blue. It's actually a different color. So this is actually matplotlib blue and not seaborn blue. If we did want to actually extract seaborn blue, I have a tip for you. What we can do is reference that Seaborn color palette once again, and this is our default color palette. But what we can actually do here is just pick off, let's say, the first two colors. That gives us the first tuple, which is the blue color, and the second one, which is our orange color. We can then go ahead and save blue and orange from this list. So now take a look at what we're doing here. Blue is actually an RGB tuple that we can then use in any of our figures. So now if we go back to our figure and instead of typing in the string blue, we could actually reference this variable blue and that'll bring us right back to the regular Seaborn blue. And just to prove that point, we also extracted the second color orange. We could type in orange, which is a Python variable that refers to that RGB tuple. And there we go, that's Seaborn's orange. So if you ever do need to use the specific colors of any of those color palettes, you can actually extract them as Python variables and then use them in other figures. 
Besides those named palettes, you can also create your own custom color palettes in Seaborn based off of a single color or blended between multiple different colors. You can even create a highlighting palette that emphasizes one particular category. There are a couple different ways that you can create custom palettes with Seaborn. We already saw that you can pass in a string of a named color palette to this color palette function, but if you need additional colors out of this palette, you can pass in an integer, or if you'd like fewer colors, you can pass in a smaller integer. So whatever integer you pass in here will be the number of colors returned by this function. You can also create your own color palettes by accessing this light palette function. And this light palette is going to be based off of one named color, such as blue. So the light palette will start from a lighter color and go all the way up to whatever named color you've passed in. And we'll see a sequential palette here. That just means that this palette contains varying shades of just one color. You can also use Seaborn to create a dark palette and once again, we just pass in a named color here, but now we're starting with a really dark color and going up to that named color. And you can pass in whatever named color you'd like, whatever makes sense for your particular problem. So we just saw how to create sequential color palettes with Seaborn. You can also create diverging palettes using this blend palette function. So now here are the arguments going to be a list of colors. Seaborn will basically just create a palette that blends between all the colors you've passed in on the list. So here we only have two colors in our list, so we go from blue to red. But there's nothing stopping you from having more colors if you'd like. If I also pass in yellow, we'll see that we now go from blue to red to yellow. And of course, I can again enter an integer if I'd like to have more colors that span between that list of colors. Now, when it comes time to use any of these palettes in a Seaborn figure, you can just pass them to the palette argument. So here, let's pass in that blend palette, and we're going to range here from blue to red. Now, when you do this, you may get an error just like the one I got here, and that's because the default number of colors for a blend palette is six but we actually only have four different categories in our day column. We have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, so we actually only need four colors to come out of our palette. That means that we need to go into this palette and specify that we only want four colors, and then we'll see blue to red for those four colors. Now, the final thing I wanna show you is not really a Seaborn function, but it's just a something that I find to be really useful with these palettes. So you can create what's called a highlighting palette. This is basically going to be used whenever you want to emphasize one or two categories, but keep the rest a dull color. So for this, I'm going to create a palette dictionary, and I'm basically just going to use a dictionary comprehension. This will just say for x in tips.day.unique, for every single unique day that I have in the tips day column, I'm going to write that day's name, as the key of this dictionary and then gray for the value. So let's take a look at that. Now we have Sunday, Saturday, Thursday, and Friday as our keys, which are those categories coming from the day column. And all of the values here are gray. Well, let's say that we wanted to highlight Saturdays in our figure. We could go back to our palette dictionary, reference whatever category we're interested in, and then pass in a new highlight color that will be specific for that category. Now, if we look at our palette dictionary, we'll see that we still have gray everywhere except for Saturday, which is listed as crimson. Now, to use a palette dictionary like this, I'm going to go back to the palette argument, and instead of passing in a named Seaborn palette, I'm going to pass in that palette dictionary. Now, you'll see that all of the days are gray except for Saturday, which is red. So this can be really useful if you do wanna highlight one particular day and just pay attention to the syntax here. Once again, if I look at that palette dictionary, you'll see that the keys are the actual values coming from the day column or the values are the colors that I would like to have appear. And you will need one different key for every single unique value that comes from the column referenced in your hue argument. Another really cool benefit of having something like a highlighting palette is that now you can continue to use it in any of your other figures as well. So if you had a lot of figures that referenced those same categories, you can still use it to highlight Saturdays. So I hope you enjoyed learning all about Seaborn color palettes. All of the code I demoed is available on my GitHub page. 
And there's even more that you can do with Seaborn color palettes. So I'm going to make a second video all about Cube Helix as well as Color Brewers. Keep an eye out for that one whenever it's available. I'll see you then. Welcome or welcome back. Uh, welcome or welcome back. Welcome back to my channel. Based off of a single color or like 